Is politics a playground for insiders? Is government a good old boys club, a system that operates by a different set of rules than the ones they impose on the rest of us? Is it a swamp, a circus, a charade, a house of cards? Is it all just a game? Polls show that this is exactly the way millions of Americans view their government, and it's why confidence in institutions is at a record low. People don't trust government. But what is the truth? How do the good people survive in an atmosphere that seems so very intoxicating? How do they reject the seductions, the power, the prestige, the special privileges? Today we'll meet a man who spent much of the last 20 years challenging that system. As an outsider, he got a rare view of what life is like inside the halls of power. Next on State of Independence. Stay with us. There are many reasons millions of Americans don't go to church, don't give to charities, don't trust the government, don't get married, and don't vote on election day. But at the core, it's because each of the institutions I just mentioned are dominated by flawed people, people who've at one point or another been observed breaking faith or not keeping their word. Matt Briette came to Pennsylvania State Capitol 20 years ago as something of a pessimist, someone who didn't count many politicians as friends and who had a pretty cynical view of the way government worked or didn't work for the people. As a former teacher and past president of the state's largest conservative think tank, Matt was on the front pages a lot, calling out the state's most powerful politicians, holding them to account for what he believed were bad votes and misguided policies. Today he leads an organization that puts millions of dollars into finding and supporting principled candidates for office and defeating others. But what has he learned in 20 years about the people in politics? Is he still cynical? Has he grown more hopeful? I'll ask him in a minute, but first, watch this. It's been said a lot lately of elections that politics is a circus. They say politicians are clowns, entertaining for votes, willing to perform, to do anything to rescue careers with death-defying front-page high-wire acts. The argument goes they'll say anything, they'll be anyone for a vote. But are principles really for sale? Are politics and government just a wonderland of screeching carnival barkers and sideshows? Is the process of electing leaders a hall of mirrors, twisting and distorting reality? And with just 20% of Americans expressing confidence in government, what's the real story? And what needs to change? Matt Briette has spent two decades asking and answering these questions. Matt, welcome to State of Independence. And, and can I just say that, it, it, that in a business that eats up and spits out so many good people, you've lasted quite a long time. Uh, we're, we're so glad you could be with us today. Um, give me your sense Thank of it, you. Matt. Um, give me your sense of all this. I mean, uh, what was it about this arena, uh, this battle for ideas that, that first drew you to it? Um, what, what made you want to get into this? Yeah. Joe, uh, thanks for having me on. It's a pleasure to be with you. And uh, sorry, we can't be together in person, but uh, I know one day we'll break bread again. Um, you know, what really got me involved in this as a uh, middle school, high school history teacher, passionate about the founding of this country, uh, the men and women that uh, struck out, really entrepreneurs that uh, said, we can uh, do things better. And the founding of this great nation that has gone on to feed, clothe, heal, shelter more people around the world than any other nation ever has. Um, I got passionate about that as a teacher. But as I taught uh, my students about the founding of this country and what we have grown to be uh, over hundreds of years, um, I was watching a lot from the sidelines of politics and, and seeing that, you know what, uh, I'd like to get involved there because I believe that men, when men and women of character, of integrity, uh, leave the political sphere to others, I think we end up getting a lot of uh, the things that, uh, well, in your intro there, the cynicism that we've heard out there. And that's because uh, good people 
have left uh, the world of politics. And uh, I wanted to be a, a positive voice. I wanted to be a positive influence. Um, and I first started doing that through uh, my work with a think tank on the policy side of things. And, and as noted, uh, I've moved into the political side because uh, in order for us to have good public policy uh, in Pennsylvania and across America, we have to have good politicians. And that's uh, really where I've been focused uh, for the more than four years now in my new role at Commonwealth Partners. Now, tell me, uh, is, is it a cheap shot to call uh, the political arena a circus? Uh, is that really fair to say, or, or do you think it's just that, uh, that crazy? Um, it is crazy, Joe. Uh, so uh, the, the question is, are they a bunch of clowns uh, in that circus? Um, because if we were to take this analogy further, uh, a real circus has some very talented people. Uh, operating. And uh, I would say that there are some very talented and very good people uh, in the Capitol just up the road here from where I'm sitting. Um, and the challenge is, is that um, they frequently uh, are not as loud as either the bad actors or people that, uh, um, frankly, are that small minority that are not here to do what's best for the broader uh, common good. And so uh, that's the challenge is that getting the message out that there are some really fantastic people that are fighting the good fight, that are trying to do what is best uh, for the, the people of Pennsylvania. Um, and that's very easily drowned out by um, bad actors or uh, scandals that happen. And we've seen that uh, over the years. I've experienced many of them. Um, but uh, that, unfortunately, is what smears the entire body uh, oftentimes uh, is uh, those bad apples spoiling the whole bunch. Yeah. Have you ever thought yourself about maybe getting into it? I mean, you know, certainly you've worked at the think tank and now you're, you're supporting candidates. Have you ever thought to yourself that you might want to jump in as a candidate yourself to, to bring some of the change that you talk about? Well, uh, I not only thought about it, Joe, but uh, about a year ago, uh, I did throw my hat into the ring for a special election uh, for a state senator. Uh, and uh, that was uh, a process that uh, did not include the voters, but a select few of, of committee people to uh, decide who would be the nominee for our county uh, Senate seat in Lebanon County. Uh, I was not selected. Um, and uh, actually, I thank God for that at this uh, juncture of my life, uh, because I believe that I can have a stronger influence uh, and come alongside elected officials as opposed to being an elected official myself. But that was one of those boxes, Joe, uh, that uh, I was surprised that my wife told me uh, to go ahead and, and pursue that. Um, I think she knew that if I didn't check that box just once, uh, I might have regrets. So I now have that box check, uh, but now I'm very thankful for what I get to do now. Yeah. So, so tell me, what do you uh, admire most in politicians? Uh, who are the, what are the kind of politicians for whom you have the greatest admiration? And then conversely, uh, what are the kinds of politicians for whom you have great uh, dislike? I mean, who, who, who do you not admi admire and, and why? Or not necessarily who, but what kind of politician do you not admire? Yeah, so uh, that's an interesting question, Joe. One of the things that I always try to keep in mind is that every man and woman, whether I agree with them or disagree with them on a, a policy uh, point, uh, is that they are made in the image of God. And I try to conduct myself and behave in a manner that treats them as such. Um, and uh, honestly, the, the people that uh, I just am attracted to and have gotten to know are really the folks who never lose that passion that brought them to Harrisburg, and uh, they resist a lot of the temptations, uh, frankly, to uh, treat this like going back to college. I've, I've always said that uh, some folks come here and they relive their college years like they're in a dorm room and going out to the bars at night, and we've seen a lot of folks get in trouble that way. Uh, but but there, a lot of the folks who we see in leadership today are people who are very grounded. They are headed home at night or they are not participating in sort of that fraternity lifestyle that had been character, uh, characterizing of, of this town for a long time. And so that's where I'm thankful, Joe, and where I, I would say things have dramatically improved in the 20 years that I've been here in the quality of the leadership, the quality of the people, 
uh, that are coming into leadership positions. Uh, and uh, that's what gives me a lot of hope and that, no, it's not a circus and there's a bunch of clowns, but it can be a circus. But I think we've got a lot of talent talented uh, people that are principled and passionate about doing what's right for uh, the people of Pennsylvania. So you've been in Harrisburg for about 20 years now. You've got a couple of decades under your belt. A lot of people know who you are. Uh, certainly uh, powerful people know who you are. Um, but maybe not a lot of people know, and certainly our viewers may not know, that you're a believer in Christ and Jesus. Uh, tell us something about that journey. Were you a Christian person when you first came to Harrisburg, or, or did you become a Christian after getting to Harrisburg? And, and what, has, what has strengthened your walk uh, in, the, in, the, in your two decades on, on, on the Hill? You bet. So uh, I was brought to Christ uh, my senior year of high school by one of my uh, uh, history teacher um, and a Bible teacher. The irony, Joe, is that I was not a Christian, yet went my senior year of high school to a Christian high school. Wow. where I, uh, I had to take a Bible class. And that really opened my eyes and caused me to question a lot of the things that I was pursuing in, in my young life. Um, I played football uh, and I had a fantastic coach that uh, also spurred me on in pursuing my faith. And so I was saved in January of 1987 and then went off to play football, uh, Division Three football. And lo and behold, the Lord surrounded me with the strongest Christians on my campus. And uh, not only were they on the football team, but they were in my position uh, uh, class. And that was uh, a really a four year growth uh, away at college. And that I ended up uh, taking into the classroom where I taught for seven years. Um, and so uh, that was, you know, it was my faith, Joe, that uh, led me to my first career. Uh, and has also led me to my second career, uh, being in politics. And um, while I am trying and, f and fight uh, every day and am passionate about uh, improving public policy in Pennsylvania, I know that at the end of the day, um, unless the hearts of men and women uh, are renewed, restored, regenerated, uh, that America won't be as great as she once was or as she could be uh, in the future. And so uh, while I will fight uh, tooth and nail for good policy, whether it's rescuing kids from uh, violent and failing schools or trying to uh, allow for the young entrepreneur has a great idea, but is uh, regulated out of business or unable to, to enter a marketplace that we break down those barriers. I'm passionate about those things, Joe, but all at the end of the day, none of that matters uh, when we talk about eternity. Uh, and so for me, that is always my driving force. And, and uh, while I fail uh, uh, to uh, represent Christ well in the workplace all the time, um, I'm thankful that the Holy Spirit convicts me uh, and uh, humbles me. And when necessary, having to repent even to uh, uh, my opposition on, on uh, policy issues where I have had to uh, ask for forgiveness for m my behavior. And I think that that's, uh, um, you know, I'm thankful for that. Um, and it also helps control my tongue because uh, it's a lot easier to control it on the front end than, than to have to go uh, uh, make reparations on the back end. So how do you love the opposition? I mean, the opposition is not our enemy because we're all Americans. And uh, so we're all on the same team uh, as far as that's concerned. But uh, clearly there are there's a political divide in this country, and certainly uh, if you're a conservative, uh, you have a, a point of view that uh, may be different from somebody who might be a liberal uh, or even a moderate. Uh, tell me how uh, the challenges of loving your neighbor as yourself, even when you don't see eye to eye politically. Yeah, that's a great question, Joe, and I think a lot of it uh, comes down to communication and relationship, uh, that we don't enter into those conversations. Uh, and we don't enter into relationships to better understand those who hold differing viewpoints. Um, and what I have found and what's given me the ability to love my opposition despite fighting in, in the, the policy ring um, is, as hard as I can is that I frequently find that uh, they want the same things that I want. Uh, they've identified the same problems that I've identified. Uh, and that we really have different approaches to it. And while I will take a free market 
uh, or conservative approach to something. Um, they're also bringing their progressive or liberal uh, perspective, trying to solve that same problem. And while I believe my solutions uh, will better cure our public ills, um, I don't um, uh, attribute evil intent uh, to my opposition. I think that that's, that's an important approach, that we view them uh, not as evil, but maybe as misguided or not understanding um, uh, how we can better solve these problems than uh, always going for bigger government or uh, using this or that uh, government program. So that to me is really the key is, is how we view, it kind of goes back to what I said earlier. Um, do I view uh, everyone uh, made in the image of God? And if I do, that has to change how I react to my political opposition. Right. Have you been able to, uh, over the course of your time, build relationships with people who are on the other side of the aisle uh, from you uh, and, and, have a, and maintain a, a, an abiding relationship even though you don't see uh, eye to eye on, on these political issues? Oh, absolutely. I've uh, made friends with uh, the Speaker of the House uh, from the other side of the aisle, if you will, the Democrats, uh, as well as the Minority Whip. Um, I've, I've, I have a number of folks who uh, raise eyebrows when people learn that uh, I'm either out to dinner with this person or in a, a conversation or a relationship. Um, and I find great value in that. In fact, sometimes in my early years, uh, when I was at odds with a lot of folks uh, from the Republican side of the aisle, uh, I, I found that I was embraced by uh, uh, those on the opposite side. Maybe it's because we said, you know, we don't agree on anything, uh, <laughs> but uh, we do enjoy having a meal together and learning from one another. And I think that, you know, that has lasted for my past 20 years that I've got some of those relationships that, uh, like I said, raise some eyebrows amongst people but I'm really glad that that happens. Yeah, well, that, you got the right, uh, the right attitude, the right spirit, uh, Matt, because uh, at the end of the day, we know that we have to answer to our, our maker, and uh, we want him to be pleased with us. We want him to say, well done, good and faithful servant, enter into the joy of your master. So I think that pleases God when, when, uh, when, we, when we love people who don't, even, who don't agree with us and who may not look like us. Uh, I, I think that's a marvelous and wonderful thing. Uh, in, in closing, just I would love to know uh, what you what you read and listen to uh, we, we don't have a, we have about a minute uh, before we, we before the segment ends but I would love to know what you what you read and uh, what you're reading now and, and also what you listen to yeah I'll, I'll start with what I listen to because uh, that's part of my my morning routine of, of uh, driving in uh, from home into Harrisburg which is generally about a 30 minute ride uh, and I commend this to everyone uh, that is interested. Uh, Albert Moeller, who is the president of the Southern Baptist Theological Seminary, does a daily podcast called The, the, the Briefing, uh, and it is fantastic. It provides a Christian perspective to world events. Uh, and if you've got uh, 25 minutes of time, that is the one podcast that I commend to everyone that is interested in how a Christian um, uh, you know, pursues uh, politics. So that, that's my favorite. Uh, I'm reading right now, uh, Live Not By Lies uh, by Rod Dreher and how Christians um, need to be responding to this really post-Christian world and the threats that we are seeing to uh, uh, religious liberty uh, and all of our liberties. So uh, I'm at the front end of that. So Joe, I'll have to come back and tell you uh, my book review of that book. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Matt, thanks so much for joining us today on State of Independence and, uh, and God be with you as you continue your career on Capitol Hill. Thanks so much. Thank we'll be right back. Learn more about Joe Watkins and the mission of this program at joewatkins.net. And tell Joe what you thought about today's program in the comment box. Representative Greg Rothman is a Republican who represents suburban communities around Harrisburg. His best friend in the state capitol is Philadelphia Democrat Representative Steve Kinsey. They're doing something rather unusual in an age of incivility. They're working together. And what's more, they formed a bipartisan caucus. Greg Rothman is in Harrisburg. Welcome to State of Independence, Greg. 
Thank you. Thanks for having me. Uh, glad to have you. Glad to have you. I, I know you're a Christian brother. Is, is, is your faith in Christ the, the impetus for doing this, or is it, is it the fact that you're, you're underground in the Capitol and you thought that given the time in which we live where people just tend to be so incivil toward one another that this was, this was the right thing to do? Well, it's, 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 it's both, but like, certainly we're commanded to love our neighbors. And, uh, uh, I, I just think that democracy is at risk, uh, in this current toxic situation. And, and if, if we're not talking to each other, um, so one of the things I love about American democracy is that we can go through elections and have, you know, as they say, bloodless revolutions where one party takes over without, um, you know, without a, you know, any any warfare and and so um, the rhetoric has to tone down or I think democracy is at risk. We have to be civil. We have to get along. We have to debate respectfully. And and Steve Kinsey and I may not agree on a lot um, on policy stuff, but you know he's a he's a fellow human being and and I love him and I love him like a, a brother or my neighbor or as I should. And um, yeah, how'd you guys so, how'd you guys you, you met in the in the in the state capitol? Yeah. Or? When I first got to the legislature, I mean, he made some comment about my tie. He complimented me. <laughs> nice. He had a brother. Uh, one of his older brothers was a Marine. And uh, I found out that he had passed away. And I drove down to the funeral. It was pouring rain in, a, wow. in Philadelphia. And I went because um, I, I felt called to go. And I think that, you know, unfortunately, I've been to more funerals in his district than birthday parties. But I, I haven't missed many of his birthday parties. Um, but he is... Um, He's just a good person. So we started talking and we both had daughters and, you know, when you have daughters, you have things in common. And it wasn't we didn't talk about politics. We just talked about our lives. And, um, you know, and, and you know, there's a lot, you know, just I remember one time we were, at a, we were on the appropriations committee together and we we're on transportation together. And we were there all day long and I was starving and he walked by and he, he threw me a little packet of a fruit snack. And so, you know, he also called me one day and he, he didn't have a tie and. I live close by the Capitol, so I brought him a tie. And so um, we, we wanted to set an example to other legislators that just because you're from different parts of the state or different parties or different political philosophies doesn't mean you can't love each other and be yeah. friends. Yeah, I, I guess he agrees with you that uh, that, it, it, that it has been pretty broken, but it, but it can be fixed, right? I mean, you know, all oh, things I, are possible. Joe, it has to be fixed, and I think we can. I, I think, you know, we're it's, it's time for us to come together as a state and come together as a country and... Um, start listening to each other. And that doesn't mean we have to compromise. And neither one of us believe we have to compromise our principles, but you can compromise your opinions and you can, you can tone down the rhetoric and speak to each other and listen more. And look, I mean, I, I, I don't expect that uh, overnight people are going to change their political positions, but they ought to change their you know, the, the way we deal with each other. I think that would go a long way in Harrisburg, too. How do, you, how do your, your colleagues, your Republican colleagues, uh, see this? I mean, have you gotten any pushback from, from folks on the, on the Republican yeah. side? Our, our leadership is very supportive. Um, they get it. Um, there are some cynics. Uh, and, and look, I respect that. And, um, you know, I haven't been, maybe I haven't been there long enough. I've only been there five years. I'm, I'm still naive. Um, but look, I ran a successful business that brought people together in, in real estate and um, we never asked people what their party affiliations were. We we just tried to bring them together. And there are some big issues that we have to face in Pennsylvania. We have to rebuild Pennsylvania economically and um, get through this pandemic. And um, we have to do something about young people leaving the state. It's a, a state that's aging and our demographics are in trouble. And I, I think if you want people to be engaged in, in uh, public policy, uh, they have to and they can't they can't watch us scream at each other. So, um I, th I think it can be done. Yeah, well, I think I, 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 you're, you're an optimist, and I think that's the right way to be, uh, uh, Greg. Uh, I, I just love your attitude. I, I love the fact that you that you, uh, you you put your faith into action by by reaching out to people who don't necessarily agree with you, and and by being a leader and forming this bipartisan uh, caucus. I think that's uh, that's true leadership, and so I, I just I just uh, love that about you. Uh, thanks so much for, for joining us today on uh, State of Independence. We'll, we'll talk again soon. Thank you. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Learn more about Joe Watkins and the mission of this program at joewatkins.net. And tell Joe what you thought about today's program in the comment box.
Well, it was great to hear from Matt Bruette and from uh, Greg Rothman. Uh, now we're going to talk to our great producer, Jeff Coleman. Well, uh, one of the reasons I was hoping when we invited uh, those two gentlemen on the show is that people would leave who are cynical, who think it's a political circus. Everything is uh, smoke and mirrors and a hall of mirrors and all those metaphors. But to leave with a sense of hope that there are people who don't view this business as a game. And number two, that they're actually guided by something permanent in, in a time of great change yeah. where people don't know what people believe. Both of them are, are people of faith, of great yes. faith, and so they're, 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 that centers them, and they bring that to the table uh, in their uh, placement here in the political world, and uh, I just, I, I was so encouraged by what Matt had to say, and, and also encouraged by what Greg had to say and what he's doing, because yeah. I think it's so needed in this time when, when people are so divided, you know, to have a leadership on, on both the Democratic and the Republican sides of the aisle uh, in the House to come together and, and to say, you know, let's form a bipartisan committee. Let's, let's figure out how we can tone down the message, you know, tone down the, 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 the words and the language and, and get some things done for the people of the Commonwealth. That's a good thing, ultimately. Yeah, people are, I understand why people are cynical or scared about the idea of Republicans and Democrats being in the same room. They're talking about something as basic as, as Matt was talking about, having a Democrat that you have a meal with. Yeah. And that is controversial in today's environment, having a meal, uh, having coffee, sitting across from someone, and because the assumption is they're going to get you, right. they're going to change what you think, and you're going to vote, start voting bad, you're going to compromise. And I think the overwhelming weight, if you're a person of faith, if you're a Christian, good to go further, yeah. is that you err on the side of loving. Yeah, yeah. Well, we learned something about that. Uh, we had a, a wonderful uh, talk uh, some weeks ago with the president of Biola University, Dr. Barry Corey. And he the conversation about on kindness. On kindness, and he was yeah. talking about how he had severe disagreements with the political people in the state where his college is, and yet and still because he has a firm center but, but a soft edge. Yeah, I love that phrase. He was able to come together with uh, the opposition politically and to forge a friendship, which That's is it. meaningful. Well, thank you so much for joining us in State of Independence. We hope you found today's conversation with Matt Briette and Representative Greg Rothman uplifting. Our aim with every conversation is to encourage you to trust God with all your heart, mind, soul, and to love your neighbor as you love yourself. If you have a minute, I'd love to know what you think of this program. You can comment at joewatkins.net. I'll see and respond to almost every single one of your emails. So from America's first capital here in Philadelphia, I'm Joe Watkins. Thanks for watching. God bless. Yeah, two really, really good, decent people um, who also have wonderful families, wives, support structure behind them that hold them accountable. Joe Watkins State of Independence is a production of Lighthouse TV, positively different, made possible in part because of the support of viewers like you.